Here it comes. It's that time of year again. 2018 is over. 2019 is just beginning. Uh, probably. I'm not really sure when these videos are going up. It could be June, for all I know. Um, but we're going to do a few videos to take a look at kind of our top games of 2018. It's going to be similar to the ones we did last year. Probably the same, but different games. Uh, we're going to have at least three top five lists, starting with mine, because I make the videos, so I get to choose which order they go up in, and that's why this intro is here. Uh, but then we we'll also have Mike and Pauls from the podcast. Nathan has been a kind of regular guest on the podcast recently, has wanted one as well, so that might be coming up as well. We'll also have an overall game of the year. Ben, the editor from the site, might also be doing one. Less sure about that. We'll figure it out. But first, good to mine. Five, Wonder Song. This one was a really late entry. Uh, Wonder Song came out not that far into the year. Like it was late in the year, but not super super late. But I didn't pick it up until December. But it stuck with me so much, I just had to put it on this list. Wonder Song is at its core a puzzle platformer where you use music as a primary tool for solving puzzles. You use the right analog stick and you point it different directions and there's like I think, was it eight different directions you can point it in and that'll be a different chord or you know note or something like that basically and as a result you use that for solving puzzles they're also color coded so a lot of times the puzzles will be like you need to use a red thing and so you'll sing the red note that kind of thing it's great the puzzles are smart but never overly complicated and the thing that kind of really makes Wonder Song stick out is that it has this whole kind of adventure game element of going and talking to people and solving their problems to help you kind of progress through it. And it's all written just so perfectly. Every single bit of dialogue in that game was so good and it's the reason I stuck with it so much is I really wanted just to squeeze every extra line of dialogue out of it that I could. The core story is that you're this little bard who has a dream one night and he's visited in this dream and told, the world's gonna end. You might be the hero that can save it all. Try pull this sword out of this stone so we can find out. And he can't. And they're like, well, you're not the hero. Oh well. And he decides to go and try and put together this song that will save the world anyway. Despite explicitly being told multiple times, he's not the hero. <laughs> uh, he meets up with a witch called Miriam. And together they go on this kind of journey to try and save the world despite the fact they've been explicitly told they're not the people that are supposed to save the world and saving the world in terms of how fate and destiny says it should work involves destroying the world and replacing it with a new one which they're not super happy about because you know they live there it's a really good really funny game it's also gorgeous and i highly recommend it <laughs> Number 4 on my list is Super Smash Bros Ultimate for Nintendo Switch. This is one that took me a little bit by surprise but not as much as some other stuff on here. I like all of the Smash Bros games a lot, some of them more than others, you know I like the first 3 more than I like 4 for example. Uh, and because of how much I didn't really like 4, I was really kind of worried about Ultimate before it came out. I was I was sure I was going to enjoy it enough, but 4's lack of single player content really just put me off that game entirely and I ended up not sticking with it or playing it to the level that I played the previous games. So when Nintendo spent most of the year talking about how great all the multiplayer stuff in Smash Bros Ultimate was, I was terrified that this was going to be another Smash Bros game where the single player was left by the wayside. Thankfully, that is not the case. 
Smash Ultimate has uh, the best version of Classic Mode that this series has ever had, which is basically their arcade mode. Each of the, the ladders that you fight through are now ranked and uh, set based on specific characters, so they're all unique depending on who you're playing as. And then there's the World of Light mode, this, this open world kind of area, well not open world, but has like this overworld that you go across and you're solving some light puzzles, going through some dungeons and fighting all these unique battles and it's just fantastic. There's just so much to do if you're into playing this single player. And then the multiplayer is great too. It's that same Smash Brothers local multiplayer stuff that is just so easy to jump in and play. And then the online is the best it has been, but that's not really saying much because it's Nintendo and they kind of are whatever, it works. I've played a bunch of it online. That's Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Switch. Number three on my list is Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. This is the final Yakuza game with Kiryu in it. Uh, if you watched my Game of the Year video last year, you kind of will have learned already that my love of the Yakuza series started last year with Yakuza 0. So the fact that I've now played through four of those games in the past two years is kind of a testament to how much I enjoy it and that you know, this one has made my game of the year list. Uh, in a lot of ways, Kiwami 2, the other Yakuza game that came out this year, is actually kind of a bit better than this. It has like more in-depth combat and it improves a lot of things that Yakuza 6 introduced, but I really love the story in Yakuza 6. I really love the new area that they had. There's a small kind of little fishing village that you go to that's really, really nice. It's just fun to wander around and look at. And it brings Kiryu's story to a close in a way that is just really, really well handled. I, I just really, really like it. The fishing minigame in it and it also is basically the best fishing minigame I've ever played. I, you have to play it for that, if nothing else. So that's Yakuza 6 for the PS4. Number two of my game of the year list this year is Monster Hunter World for the PS4 and Xbox One and PC, I believe. It's an odd one. I really like some of the previous Monster Hunter games, but the last one I really got into was 3. And then I just kind of didn't stick with the series after that, partly because they were on portable platforms for the most part, and the controls weren't great because you were limited by, you know, having a single analog stick, or on some of those systems, no analog sticks, and it, they just were a bit clunky. I know there's big fans of those games, but they didn't really stick with me. Monster Hunter World is kind of their attempt at making a modern version of Monster Hunter. They, of course, give it the big bump in graphics that you would kind of expect from it coming onto the home consoles, but then also the monsters themselves, like anime and... They, look, they just feel more alive than they have in previous games. They'll fight each other and they'll, you know, wander around the world in a more realistic way. And then you can wander around the world is one of the more important things as well. No more of the kind of horrible split into sections map design from the previous games. This time you can just walk between areas and it's a small change, but my god, it has been overdue for several games now. I am still playing it, I've not finished everything in it yet, and I'm going to try and do everything that I can in it, because it's so goddamn fun. So that's Monster Hunter World. And my game of the year of 2018 is God of War for the PS4. If you've listened to the podcast, this might come as somewhat of a surprise, because I'm very happy to dunk on how terrible a character Kratos is and how mediocre those other God of War games are and I've just never been a fan of the series. They're kind of really basic beat-em-ups in a way that I just haven't enjoyed and it's 
it's strange that this year they brought out a God of War game that just appeals to me. God of War in 2018 is this slower, more somber take on God of War where Kratos is taking his son on a journey to scatter the ashes of his wife, the son's mother, who has passed away before the beginning of the game. Along the way, you know, it, it is a God of War game. He encounters and fights gods and tears monsters apart, and it's super gory, and it's got this really great frenetic, like, action that feels so much weightier, and when you hit something with an axe in this game, it fucking feels good, the way that I've never felt God of War combat in a previous game. I really, really like this game. It's amazing just how well they managed to reinvent God of War, which is a tired series that is desperate in need for this kind of reinvention, and I can't think of another video game series that has done this before, that has taken something and then just redid it in such a unique and interesting way. Uh, the Norse mythology setting that they have transplanted Kratos into just works perfectly. It feels so natural. There's still lots of references to the Greek stuff. Like it's not, it's not like a completely new character. I think this is that Kratos is continue. This is a continuation from God of War three, and yeah, it's just so goddamn good. I highly recommend it. It's God of War on PS4. Gods do not fall this easily, boy. I know, I know. I was just joking. Nor are they a joking matter. Sorry. So that's it, guys. That's my game of the year of 2018, or my top five. And there will be more of these videos going up soon, as I already said. You can go listen to the podcasts that are already live if you want to hear us discuss not just our top fives, but various categories we go through, you know, best... RPG, best graphics, best music, all the nonsense that we do every year where we argue about things that aren't really worth arguing about, let's be honest. But it's fun and we enjoy it. Uh, you can go listen to those, just go to glitchfreegaming.com, hit podcasts. It should be, you know, some of the more recent podcasts, depending on how long it takes me to put these videos up. Uh, and like and subscribe and hit that bell and blah, 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 all the YouTube nonsense that I'm not good at yet. We'll get there. We'll get there someday, guys.